Uh, my name's Rudy Stein. Uh, this is my wife, Darlene, our son, Connor, and our youngest daughter, Lexi. We're west of Barhead here, Tiger Lily area. We have 166 acres here, and we are currently running uh, 500 ewes, predominantly uh, Rambouillet ewes. We've mixed some Rito Arcot rams. My name's Bill Gibson, and we uh, operate a, a quarter section a sheep grazing operation uh, west of Basha, Alberta. Our sheep are all crossbreds. We have a half Frisian and half Dorset. Uh, our lambing percentage is over the whole flock, ewe lambs and, and ewes combined around 210% per year, and we run about 200 ewes. Uh, generally speaking, our system is to lightly graze the grass during the active growing season. The sheep will be moved through the paddocks quite rapidly and leave quite a bit of, of grass behind. That's our solar panel and that's what's providing the, the regrowth. Uh, after the growing season has kind of come to the end, we will graze a little bit harder. We have to have a water supply in each paddock and so Albert Agriculture's water branch offered a an incentive program at one time and so we actually have 4,000 feet of one inch plastic water line buried around the farm accessing each one of the paddocks. Water, we do have a tank as you can see in the background is a, is a 400 liter uh, plastic tank on a cut down uh, hay rack chassis that we pull with a gator. Uh, we give them uh, well water from the yard so they have the opportunity if they want to drink the well water they can. And we just use uh, string, hot wire strings, and uh, we'll split it, uh, have a back fence, and a fence in front of them, and then we just leapfrog the fences ahead as, as we're going. So we'll take one down, put it up in front. And as far as moving, moving them, uh, once they've figured out that they're coming to new pasture, uh, they're usually, by the time you have the back fence moved, they're already standing there waiting to come. This is uh, mid-season, and so there are plants that are begin beginning to head out. This is brome grass, and that's the basic fallback vegetation that you'll find in this parkland region. If there's some ground that's, that's suitable, I'll work it up and I'll reseed it. I have reseeded paddocks to uh, meadow brome grass and alfalfa and that's proven to be quite successful. I've also left paddocks uh, as I found them originally, and that's uh, a smooth brome grass, bluegrass sort of mixture. Our pasture, like the, the pasture, the field we're in currently now is mostly peat land. Uh, so the bulk of what we're grazing here is, is fescue. We don't try to grow things in our pastures that aren't gonna grow. Uh, this is what performs the best in our s management system in this ground. We do have some legume on a little bit of the higher ground. Uh, we're seeing some, some clovers and stuff like that coming. Uh, but this is what this land produces the best. It's just a matter of, of uh, grazing it when it's the most palatable. We're starting to get into our probably mid-season now. We were off at a slow start. We didn't get the, the rains in, in May. Then when the growth came, so did the rain and it came hard and it did get away on us a bit. We tried to push them through with lambing. We didn't want to move them too quickly. So that was kind of held us up. So some of our paddocks did get away on us. This area that they were moved into here had a little more grass than the piece they'd come out of. So we decided we'll probably hold them in here for an extra day just to, to uh, make them uh, take it down a little bit this is the beginning of day two. The area they have is approximately two acres. Two acres seems to be the, the right size uh, for this, um, this amount of animals. Uh, we're getting enough trampling effect on the older grasses that, that they're, they're not eating and they're cleaning up quite well on the, the younger stuff so it, it's, it's looking good. Parasites are definitely a problem when you have a, a grazing operation. You have, that's part of your management. You have to uh, deal with it. 
Uh, this year, especially because it's uh, a moister year with more humidity, we have had more problems with uh, internal parasites. With parasites, both coccidiosis and, uh, and internal worms, we uh, work with our vet quite closely. Coccidiosis in some ways is a, a bit of a hidden problem. Uh, just using the regular dewormer won't affect coccidia levels and so you have to treat them a different way. The parasites, we had some problems, but the nice thing with grazing our paddocks, the way that we are doing it in smaller paddocks, we're more confined, but by going to daily or, or you know, moving every second or third day, we're staying ahead of the bugs. We're leaving, leaving the manured ground behind and moving the animals forward. So hopefully that's going to reduce, reduce our worm loads. My name is Michel Levy and I'm a professor of large animal medicine at University of Calgary, veterinary school. The issue of pasture management I think is a key issue in, uh, in trying to limit the importance of parasites. The more we use the wormers, the more the worms become resistant. We have to find some other ways to limit the infection of, uh, of the sheep. So grazing management as part of the overall treatment of parasites is, is a major issue. What is difficult for a producer is to find the right combination of pasture management, drugs, you know, and genetics that, that make it, you know, maximize the profit. Not only having sick animals, but also maximize the profit. We give the paddocks adequate rest as much as possible in our climate and uh, we've been able to greatly improve the, the resource that we have here. Flexibility is the big thing. With the bigger fields and using, using electric string and, and tread-ins, we have the ability to make hay if we need to, uh, make the paddocks as big as we want, as small as we want. The sky's the limit to, to what you can do.